Yo, what's going on, everybody? It is 1.02 p.m. here in Crystal Lake, Illinois. That means it's time for another live stream. Today is Monday, January 30th, 2023. There's only like one more, two more days left in grit because there's 31 days in January, right? Um, we're nearing the end of the month. Just got back from, I think this is my last trip before Tokyo. Just got back from Miami. Went from like 80 degrees and humid in Miami and sunny to like, 10 degrees Fahrenheit, cold and icy here in Chicago. And uh, it was quite the rude awakening, but I'm back now. I forgot my headphones, so hopefully you guys are hearing me okay. I think you guys are probably hearing me okay. Um, but uh, I was already running late, so I was like, you know what? I'm just going to try and go uh, go for it without them today, and hopefully this sound sounds okay. Um, before we get any further, let's say hi to everyone listening on the podcast in the audio-only version. Hopefully you guys are having a good run. Hopefully it's not icy where you are. It's icy here. I'm debating whether or not this afternoon, I haven't gone for my run yet. So this afternoon, I'm debating whether or not to go for a run through the neighborhood where the walks are a lot icy and the roads are kind of like slick or just hop on the treadmill. I'm not sure which one I'm going to do yet. We'll decide in a little bit. Everyone watching this is on YouTube later after the fact. Hopefully you had a chance to watch the Miami video. Just put that up this morning. That's why I haven't done my run yet, but um, hopefully you had a chance to watch that. And now you're here and uh, enjoying some uh, more talk about Miami and whatever else we get into today. All right. Let's see who we got in the chat here today. We got uh, Matthew Acronero, who, dude, he went from having, I, what did you do this last week, man? I just saw your results in, um, in grit. You were behind me like all month long. And then over the weekend, now you're like 40 miles ahead of me. I don't understand what you've been doing, but good job uh, getting all those miles in. Kevin Huang is here, says my Primax Strong arrived today. That should be fun. Hopefully, hopefully for you, it's not icy because then you can actually go and take those out. Mika Kata says, evening all. Finally bin my Clifton 6s after a lot of kilometers. Found Clifton 7s from the bargain bin for 35 euros as a replacement. That's a good price. The 7 was a good year. I mean, they've all been pretty good. I think I, my first one I had was the, I think the first one I ever tried was the 6. I don't know if I tried the 5. I think it was the 6. 7, 8 are good. Um, and... I also just picked up a pair of the nine. Well, I didn't pick up. Hoka gave me a pair of the nines um, while I was down in Miami. I'm very excited about these. I actually, I ran the um, take the bridge event in these. So I took them out for like a little bit of marathon effort pace, a little bit of thresholdy kind of pace, running terrified through the streets of Miami and had a lot of fun with these. And I did all my kind of like shakeout miles and hanging out miles in those. Um, someone, there was a question earlier. I don't know where it went. Wanted to know, oh, yeah, Leanna is rocking the metal. I figured, you know, I figured I'd rock the metal here um, just because it is pretty, pretty intense. It's very heavy. The ribbon is extra wide because I'm guessing because of the weight. Um, and it's the, I like the half marathon one because it's blue on the background. The full marathon one is red. I think the blue looks a little bit sharper. And then this thing spins in the middle, which I think is really funny. Um, got a little bit of like a pineapple type of pattern in the back which I think is really nice and a little bit of a rhinestone kind of bedazzled piece right here. Oh, just a lot of fun on this marathon, a half marathon medal. And it reminds me that like this was a lifetime event and lifetime also does the Chicago half marathon, which is where I get those, those giant, giant medals that I've shown you guys before. So, so it makes sense. It seems to be kind of like their signature thing. Uh, Frank wants to know what I actually raced in. I raced in the rocket X twos. So, um, yeah, I've had them for a while, but I wasn't able to show them to you guys and I didn't actually have a chance to run in them. They actually sent me two different pairs. The first pair they sent me was these, and then this is how they came just like individually wrapped in just like a plastic bag. And so they sent these and they were like, hold on to them. I mean, they didn't say not to run in them, but they were like, just don't show them yet until like the week of like, or last week I could have shown them, but I was like, I'll just wait till I get to Miami to kind of show them to everybody. And then like the day before I left, they were like, Hey, we sent you guys a new package. Cause this is a pre-production unit, this colorway. And so they're like the new one, they say it's the exact same. Just there was one aesthetic change. And then this is the actual launch color. So I ran in, I ran in this one and they're still very wet because I, I ran in them. It was hot. So I was pouring water all over myself um, and I was sweating like crazy. So they just got a lot of water inside. And then I basically like took them off and put them inside a plastic bag in my luggage. And I 
forgot to do anything with it until like 10 minutes ago. So they're still wet. Hopefully they'll dry out and not be too smelly <laughs> because of that treatment. But uh, that's what I had a chance to run it. You got a Piba foam, carbon fiber plate down here. Um, yeah, this is the shoe that Steph Bruce and Alephine have been racing in. Um, Alice Wright, Callan Taylor, they've been uh, putting in those marathon efforts in this shoe. It's pretty exciting. I like it a lot. A lot of familiar things in it. Um, yeah, I have kind of like mixed thoughts on it. We can talk about it a little bit more. Let me get to some more comments in the chat. Um, yeah. Um, let's see what else we got here. Uh, Dad around says, yo, 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 I'm digging the bling, brother. Yeah, so like I was there um, with another, uh, there was a, a lot of media that, that came down for the trip. I guess not a lot, but there was a, a, a decent group of us. And one of the guys like has, this was his second or third half marathon. And so he was like, uh, so what's the protocol? Cause like I wore my medal after like we got showered up and like we went to, to brunch after the race. And he's like, what's the protocol for like wearing this around? I'm like to the, you could wear it to the airport, you know? Um, so he's like, oh, okay. Okay. So he wore his like to brunch too. And I think he, I don't, I think he ended up staying another day, but, um, I told him you can wear it around until you get to the airport. That's kind of like the accepted cutoff time. But I figured, you know, for today, I, I thought I'd put it back on um, before. Like, I don't know. I, I, I can't remember if I showed this to the girls or not, but we'll, we'll see. I don't know. I usually don't like hang on to medals for very long. So, um, but I didn't feel too bad about taking it because I mean, I don't, I've never not taken a medal from a race before. I don't think. Um, and this one at, at Miami, you have the option to not get a shirt if you don't want. And so I took that option and I didn't get a shirt. So, um, yeah, so there was that. So I felt like, eh, I feel better about it. <laughs> Mark Peterson says, it reminds me of the rims they put on everyone's cars and pimp my rat. That's right. The spinners. That was like the heyday of spinners. The, the real question is if it wasn't for pimp my ride, would spinners have got, gotten as popular as they did? I'm not sure. go running with oliver says did you have a chance to chat with luce orta in miami i very very briefly so we're walking so like the um I, I basically yelled at him as he was running so um tommy kevin the the person who had only run i think two or three half marathons before only not that not that it's only but like he had run a the fewer the one person i was talking about so kevin tommy and i were walking to the shuttles because we need to take a shuttle to get back to the starting line or not to the starting line to the expo center which is was like four miles away we're walking back and then all of a sudden i see this guy i'm like that guy looks like luis orta and i'm like it is Lu luis orta um because he like ran he kept like running back and forth so he was like run this way and then he ran this way and i was like oh that is him so i, I waved at him and it said hi he's like how'd you do and i'm like it was hot <laughs> And then I was like, how, how would you do? He was like, I was just pacing for me. I'm like, all right, good job. So that, that was the only time I had to, to, to chat with him. I should have probably kind of figured it out. I mean, I, I'm guessing like this is probably a big event for him. The Miami Marathon draws a very international crowd. Um, and since he runs for Venezuela, I'm like, oh, I bet you there was a lot of Venezuelans in town. That makes a lot of sense for him to go to this race. Um, so... Um, yeah, I wish I had like kind of thought ahead to think that he might be there because then it would have been cool to get like a little bit of a chat um, with him uh, in Miami. That would have just been pretty sweet. But yeah, it was cool to see him. I waved at him. He was looking energetic. He he looked like he had plenty of pep in his step, even though I was like exhausted and borderline like throwing up. <laughs> uh, all right. Um Ooh, Lucas says, sadly, I think I would miss Boston due to sesamoiditis, foot pain. You know, I have experience with the BAA insurance policy. Well, I'm not familiar with that at all. Ooh, I'm sorry to hear that you're going to miss Boston, Lucas. That stinks. Um, Martha says, happy perihelion day. It was Saturday or Sunday. The day we're closest to the sun all year. Wouldn't know it from the weather, of course. Wait, how is this? It is? Is it the longest, is it like the hottest day for the Southern Hemisphere? It doesn't feel like we're close to the sun right now, for sure. I gotta tell you. <laughs> um, all right. Let's see. Um, keep scrolling down here. 
Stevie 76 says, Hoka, we finally listened. Peeba. Yeah, I mean, I feel like the first thing that I think about when I think about, and I haven't like kind of put my thoughts together yet on the Carbon X2. I think I kind of like to take it for a little bit of a different kind of workout as well. Um, because I took it on the treadmill and I'm convinced it's impossible for me to get a good read on a shoe on the treadmill. After all, I like the glycerin 20 on the treadmill, but in real life, I like dislike it. And then running with this for a threshold workout on the treadmill, I just all I feel is treadmill. But then getting to do a warm up in it, a long warm up four miles, and then running a half marathon after that. Um, it was a good shoe. I like it a lot. Sometimes I'm like, no, this is a great shoe. Sometimes I'm like, no, this is just good. But I am positive that it's much better than the Rocket X. I feel like they finally have a real racing shoe. I mean, the not that the Rocket X wasn't a real racing shoe, but I feel like if I were a Hoka Pro, I'd be like, thank you, finally. Okay. You know, the Carbon X3, I felt like was a good step, but not enough. The Rocket X, I thought was like fun, but a great workout shoe. Is the Carbon, is the Rocket X2 still just a workout shoe? I, I don't think so. That might be how I end up using it just because I have a lot of shoes, but it's, it had a lot there for me at the end of the race when I was tired. So like when I get in that mode of like, I don't know how fast a pace I'm running in. I'm, I don't care. I'm not going to look at my watch anymore. I'm just going to put my feet down, keep my eyes up and go. The shoe was there for me for sure. And I feel, and there was no ble bleeding to report either. So the upper was pretty comfy, but you know, there was some kind of like, it was, it was very slippery out there. I mentioned, I talked to that about with Tommy. He had a similar experience. Um, and this material definitely like trapped water inside. But then again, like every, if it's a hot race, like the SC elite threes also carried a lot of water. So I think that's kind of like my rambling thoughts on the X2. Um, Frank says the Rocket X2 actually gives some energy return. Yeah. I mean, the Piba feels good. It's again, like a, it's, a, it's a denser Piba. So, I mean, I actually feel like if they made like a racing version of the Tracksmith Elliott, it would probably feel a lot like this is kind of like a weird way to put it in obscure terms with shoe, two shoes that no one has probably tried that much. But um, so it's a little bit denser of a Piba still. And I just I'm convinced that Hoka likes their foams like just a little bit denser. Maybe they're trying to respond to those people that are like, this shoe's not that durable and it changes too fast, you know? Um, so maybe they just, if we started out denser, it won't compress over time. So maybe that's what it is, but, um, yeah, it did have energy return. Um, it felt like there was a low carbon placement, but it didn't feel quite as like, um, kind of like harsh as the Metaspeed edge plus can be at times. So it was like kind of, I felt like it was a firmer vapor flash feeling, but like a lot denser of a Piba foam. So trying to do my best to explain it to you guys still got to kind of figure out and get, like nail down some thoughts but i'm like I, I ran 10 miles at marathon effort in the shoe on a 17 mile day that shouldn't be plenty but maybe i'll put in another workout just to kind of confirm or bolster some opinions you know um ksnt 606 says we'll be reviewing the invincible threes scope was he? yeah i think so i saw ben Johnson had his on when we were down in Houston. And I was like, I was like, first question, is it finally real knit? And he's like, no, it's not. It's this weird, like plasticky, like it's not, it doesn't even look like knit anymore. So I don't know if they're still calling it the invincible run fly knit, but whatever it is, it's not knit. So that's annoying to me, but the foam looks much squishier. And so like, that is interesting to me. So like, I didn't review the two. I reviewed the one. So I feel like three is probably a good place to come back to it. Mm. Andrew Moss says, where can Hoka take the Clifton? Companies can't keep just doing upper changes. Well, they've significantly changed the foam. It's still compression molded EVA. I'm, have I confirmed that? I'm trying to think. I read somewhere that it's compression molded EVA. I wasn't sure though. Because when you squeeze it, you're like, is this... Did they put, is this super critical now? I don't think it's super critical, but like kind of when you 
squeeze the Charmin, give it the Charmin test a little bit, you're like, oh, I don't know. And it looks a little bit different. So very close up. I feel like uh, this lighting's not perfect for showing this, but it just looks like a very different, it looks like a very different kind of foam than what's been in the Clifton before. And so I don't want to put words in Tommy's mouth. I'll let Tommy tell you what he thought. But I remember running in it at the Take the Bridge event where we were trying to like racing through the streets and I had the Clifton's on and I was like, oh, this is pretty good. Like, oh, this is like holding up. I'm like not feeling like the shoe is holding me back. Like I would think a Clifton would when you're trying to run fast. So I was like, this is nice. I really like this. I actually think that like, like for what they're trying, what each shoe is respectively trying to do, you know, the Rocket X2 in the racing space and the Clifton 9 in the daily training space. I don't know if the Clifton is the better upgrade. The X2 is a very big upgrade from X1. 9 from 8 is a smaller upgrade, but it's I'm really liking this Clifton. That's been like the standout to me. You know? Um... Carrie Smith says, how's the outsole on the X2? It looks like there's a lot of rubber on here. Um, and it's very like dense rubber, or it feels like it's very dense rubber. It kind of reminds me, this color anyway, of the outsole of the Bondi X. Um, but going through the water stations in Miami, um, I definitely felt like it was very slippery. I don't know if another shoe would have also felt as slippery, but this, this felt slippery to me. And I'm like, there's no reason why it should. So I'm just going to chalk it up to that's what like the street surface. It was like the street surface was slippery, but felt a little bit slippery so far. But it did feel like a very stable shoe. Nice amount of bounce. Great push off feeling. I still want like it's still not giving me the carbon feeling that I had in the original carbon rocket. Do you guys remember that shoe? Like if they could put like carbon rocket, carbon springiness in a Piba shoe, like I feel like that should be like the, the rocket x it's not it's not quite that but that rocket x was also just like terrifying not rocket x the carbon rocket was also kind of like terrifying to run in it was like a one millimeter drop shoe 23 millimeters of stack height it was a wild shoe <laughs> the midlife run wants to say what's up coach the beanie is a good look is authentic knit it is it is a knit material it's really nice knit it's it's been good. <laughs> Dominic Spernowski says the 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 outsole on the medial side looks kind of worn down already. Um, is it? I don't know. I don't think so. I think it's still okay. It's, I mean, I've got 17, 27, I got like 27, 28 miles in it so far. Um, yeah, I'll probably do one more workout in it and then give finalized thoughts. But so far I'm like, I feel like Hoka needed to hit a home run with this. I feel like it's, because I don't know if it's a home run. I have to check. I have to, I have to watch the tape. Um, but it's definitely, they didn't strike out. It's not a ground ball. It's not hitting into the double play, you know? So, like, it's it's good. It's like, you got, it's like, I feel like people that are worried about Hoka and the racing department, I feel like, can like take a breath. Like, this is a good one. But I'm not sure. Like, there's been a lot of good shoes that just came out. So, it's like, is it enough? Is the, is like the real question, you know, for me. Uh, Fianor 1977 says, do you have any weird custom lacing setups on the Takumi Sen 8? I skipped the middle lace holes because there are too many <laughs> close together. Um, yeah, I um, I don't I don't know how to do any of that. You know who has a lot of weird lacing? Ben Johnson does. Like every time I look at his shoes, I'm like, what is happening with these laces here? He's like, oh, I decided to skip like three and five for blah, blah. And he just starts talking and it's like engineer talk. And I'm like, that's cool. <laughs> I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know how to like do any of that stuff, but I feel like if you skip the middle laces, doesn't that make the laces even longer? I feel like the laces on the Kumi Sen are already too long, you know? 
I don't know. Uh, Michael Haney says, I like the brick colored believe in the run hat. I got the cream. No, I have cream. This is a CLA hat. So it's not, um, it's a similar kind of style. I don't, the believe in the run one is not CLA. I don't think, but it's just a, you know, knit hat, nice and comfy. I have the cream one too. And I really like that one as well. I think mine's dirty though. Cause I ran in it a little while ago. Um, Scott Strill says, we give pickleball a try. You know, there is a pickleball court in this subdivision. Cause in this subdivision, there's like the regular houses, there's a townhouses section. And then there's, um, like adjacent to this, there's like assisted living kind of facilities. And then there's also like senior living. So that there's like little ranches for like, I don't know if it's like 50 and over or 60 and over or what, which I guess means like my wife and I could move in pretty soon. But I'm guessing you can't have kids and live in there. But there's a little clubhouse in the, in the independent living area. And um, there's a pickleball court. And I always want to, I've never seen anyone play there, you know, but like, I think Mike Wardian is become a sponsored pickleball athlete. And so like, I'd, I'd like to play a pickleball game like with Mike Wardian, like Thomas from Believe in the Run, me, and like, I don't know, let's get hella good in there. I feel like that would be a fun <laughs> pickleball day. That That's how I would play pickleball. Otherwise, I'm really not that interested. Um, when we were in Florida with my family, the little like condo area that we were, like vacation rentals place that we stayed at, they had a ping pong table and I was super excited. I was like, I'm going to destroy you at ping pong. Cause my daughter wanted to play. I'm like, I don't think, you know, like I come from like, I'm like 17th generation ping pong master. I don't know if you knew that, but I am. And um, so we go and like, you have to go into the lobby to like the front desk to like get like a ping pong paddles and the ball and stuff. And it's just like, it was like a toy plastic paddle, and I, which is like, okay, I can, I can figure out how to play with this. And then the ball, it wasn't like a regular ping pong ball, but it was like a Fisher Price ping pong ball. And I was like, oh man, this is frustrating. So we couldn't even hardly play. So the secret is still safe till the next time my daughter encounters a ping pong table. <laughs> I'm not really a ping pong master, but my dad and I used to play like a ton. We moved into this one house when I was about my daughter's age. Uh, the house we moved into, like they, the people that lived there that before just didn't want to move the ping pong table so we got a free ping pong table and my dad and i would go into the basement and we'd play for like hours just like epic battles and we'd both come up like shirts drenched just playing ping pong it'd be like smash 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 you know um it was really fun it was really fun so i i, I would like to get a ping pong table Calvin says, with the rocket name, I feel like it should be the aggressive racer while the Carbon X or Carbon X4 would be the traditional marathon shoe. Um, yeah, well, here's the thing. So, like, I posted a teaser for this for this shoe, like that treadmill Instagram reel that I did. And Road Running Reviews, Carlos, he's like, oh, you got the CLO Road? And I'm like, what's the CLO Road? I didn't know that. So the CLOs are the name of their spikes. So they're like the CLO MD, which is like the 400 800 meter spike and then the sierra ld which is like the mile and, and two mile and uh and 5k spike or 5000 meter spike and so um i was like oh what shoe is he talking about i don't even know about that so i feel like if they wanted to have an aggressive like 5k 10k racer cielo would be i feel like the nice franchise to put it in i feel like the rocket should be their marathon i think they're using the rocket as their marathon shoe and then carbon x is their ultra marathon road shoe because remember, like the first, well, the first Carbon X event got canceled for some reason. I was supposed to go to that one. It was in LA, but it got canceled. And then, or did they have it? And I got disinvited. I don't remember, but I didn't go. <laughs> and then uh, Carbon X Two was the one where Walmsley went for that uh, the the record. Was it the hundred k record? You know. So I feel like that's our ultra distance shoe, where like the rocket is going to be their marathon shoe. And then maybe the Cielo becomes like the shorter distance racer. I'm not sure. I don't know on that one. Uh, Kit wants to know, do you think the Rocket X2 is the fastest shoe from Hoka? Uh, other than the spikes, yeah, for sure. Like this is a legit racer. I mean, you could put it, at least put it that way, you know. 
I think in terms of like where it stacks up compared to the competition that's out there, um, I got to think a little bit more about that. But like, this is a legit racing shoe. So like, I don't know, like I was uh, at the Take the Bridge. There was a couple of really fast runners. There's always really fast runners that Take the Bridge. Um, but like some of them were wearing like the on cloud boom echoes. And I was telling Tommy that I had never actually seen those in real life before. Tommy has because he's done work with on but like I was like I never seen them um, and those guys were fast but I'm like those young guys were probably fast in whatever they wore um, but I feel like you know like that I'm, I'm like I don't think that on has like a, a real racing shoe for like normal people like me you know and so I feel like that's a gap that they have in their lineup I felt like a like a real racing shoe was a gap that Hoka had in its lineup um because I felt like the Rocket X was a great, like, it was like a super Rincon, you know, it's like a Rincon Plus. Um, but it wasn't like a racing shoe to me. This Carbon X2, Rock, Rocket X2 definitely feels like a racing shoe. But you know what? They didn't, I'm glad with Hoka though, you know what they didn't do? They didn't put like an X mark in the bottom. Because you know they put the X mark in all the other shoes? Like the Bondi X, the Tecton X, like there's a little X in the like mini windows. So I'm glad that they refrained from doing that. <laughs> um, Jody Beck says, do you think because the Rocket X was at the beginning of the carbon plate era, that is a reason it felt better, but you tried it now, but if you tried it now, it wouldn't have been so good. I agree. I agree. So like, I feel like Hoka, if I'm not wrong, maybe you guys can correct me on this one. So it went like, there was other carbon plate shoes. I'm not saying like, Nike invented it, but like there, there's the four percent. It's kind of like the start. Then there was the Carbon Rocket. Then was it like Carbon? Then there was Carbon X, and that was like a, we're like, what is this? This is not soft at all, and it was weird. Um, and but then the Rocket X didn't come out till 2020. I remember the first time I saw Rocket X was on Alfie and Tilly Mix's feet at um the marathon trials. So maybe not the rocket X wasn't, I don't know that that was the beginning, but I guess it was kind of early. Cause that was the first, that was when the alpha fly also kind of alpha fly Hyperion elite two. Those were all like debuted at that same race. Hmm. Stevie 76 says, I'm not sure it's a home run, but it might be an in the park home run. I'm, I, yeah. I'm just not sure if it's like a ground rule double or, or if it's a home run, <laughs> maybe it's an in the park home run. That could be, that could be also it too it's either i mean like i feel pretty good about the shoe i'm either gonna like fall in love with it more as i run in it more or i'm gonna be like man i don't know what i was thinking i think part of my hesitation with it is like i was so excited about the carbon x3 and then later i was like no man this ain't that good so i'm like i've been kind of burned by hoka a little bit i guess in the racing shoe department so i'm like trying to be a little bit more tempered on it um Run Tommy wants to know how low does a plate sit in the front? Rubber plate foam or rubber foam plate? So I I feel like it is my guess is that it tracks. So you could see it's very high up by the back, by the heel. So it's definitely curling down. And I think that it's tracking this. So I think we've got a relatively low plate position, but it's not like energy arc, which would like start like up here and then crank down. Same with like the Metaspeed Edge Plus. It like cranks down. Metaspeed Sky kind of goes like this. You know? Um, and then like the Nike shoes kind of like go in the middle where they like start out high and they scoop a little bit. So like I think that it's a relatively low but flat plate position. So it's not super like arced down. So it doesn't like slap your foot down to get into the rocker for the quick turnover. Does that make sense? That's my sense of what I'm I'm feeling, and that's what it kind of looks like to me. Mm. Andrew Moss said, what do you think would be the surprise shoe of 2023, like the original Nova Less in 2020? I don't know. That's why it makes every year so exciting. I, I feel like TRE, it's like uh, preseason, and then after preseason, everyone's like, oh boy, all these teams could possibly win the championship this year, and then by the end of the year, you're like, oh man, we were so wrong, weren't we? So I feel like who knows what the surprise is going to be. Um, I am liking the Endorphin Elite way more than I 
thought I would based on like what it looked like. Um, I did get a chance to try it on at, at, at TRE, but, uh, like one of them. Um, and I was like, all I felt was rocker. And I still feel nothing but rocker when I like walk around in the shoe, but running in it, it makes a lot of sense for me, even though it's not designed like exactly for my foot strike. Um, so that's been a nice surprise. I think that the Primex 2 is the shoe that I'm like really waiting for. Um, that one's is going to be super fun. And then I don't know. I don't know what the, like, I don't, you know, that's the thing about black swans is that you don't know how to see them ahead of time. Um, yeah. Someone asked me about the Nimbus 25. That shoe's coming out soon. I got to film that video. I'm going to do a little collab on that one for that video. So that should be fun, but I got them. They're just over there. Um, I do really like that one a lot. And that's a really nice surprise. I'd seen versions of it in the development, which I normally don't get to do, but I think because I was with Believe in the Run a lot and they and Megan was a wear tester. So they would keep showing them and I would be there and I'd be like, I don't want to look at this yet, guys. And they'd be like, here, just take a look. I'm like, no, I don't want to see it because <laughs> I get confused because if it changes, then I won't remember what was the what was the right one and what's the not right one. But um, that shoe turned out much better than I was expecting. And I th my guess is because they basically use no gel in the shoe. I'll show you guys in my review. I have a photo of what the gel looks like. I took a picture of it last summer, like August. Um, they showed me like a blown up version. There's like almost no gel in it. And that's, that's what makes it so great. That's why I like it. <laughs> that's why I can get along with the Nimbus this year is because there's no, there's no gel. There is, but there isn't. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> uh, Melvin Newman says, I love Saucony's, but the Axon, the Echelon, the Guide, the Ride, Cohesion, Triumph, Convara, Freedom, Peregrine, both GT and Ice. And then there's the Shield versions of stuff. There's the Elite, the Shift, the Speed, the Pro, and now the Convara Pro, and the Endorphin Elite. So confusing. They got a lot. They got a lot. But, you know, I think that, I don't think that's too many. I don't know what Saucony's market share is. Like, I don't know, like, what kind of units they're pushing. Um... But it doesn't seem like too many to me. I mean, think about how many like products that Nike has. Like, there's an entire like fleet of things that we don't even know about, and they're only sold at like Paylesses and stuff like that, like family footwear, you know, that kind of thing. Um, so, like, there's a lot of, of SKUs that are out there. Um, some of those I don't really know much about because they're like the stability shoes. But there is a lot. But I also feel like every running brand should go in a period of expansion and then calling like experiment and then pare down so you know it should kind of be like a like sinus wavy i guess circular you know so that's kind of what i'm thinking um are they at the point where they need to call maybe but i'm just like i feel like um there's that one designer that's there or product person that's there and i feel like they finally were like okay, go, go for it. And she's just like, F yeah, let's do it. And like, she just made all these, I don't, I know she didn't make them by herself, but I just feel like she's like, we're doing it. Someone said, okay, I got a green light. So we're going to go. And like, that's why we're seeing all this crazy, crazy wild stuff. And I'm here for it. I'm like, this is great. Like keep pushing her, let her let just get out of her way and let her make the shoes. Cause she's doing a good job out there. It's so fun to see. Uh, Sam Miles says, do you have any idea when a new Primax is coming out? I want to buy strong, but we'll hold out if a new one is coming soon. I don't think it's coming soon. Um, but then again, like they also told us that like the Takumi Sen 9 wasn't going to come out until like summer and they were, and then it came out two weeks later. But I do get the sense that like Primax 2 is going to take a really long time to come out. I think the Adios 4 is delayed because um, they're having some issues with the, with the foam. It's not durable enough for them. So I don't know if the same problem exists with the Prime X2 as well. So I say, if you can find the Prime X strong, if, you, if it goes on sale again, buy it. Don't worry about it. You know, so just get it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Where this is... Because okay, we were talking about the senior living area in the neighborhood. She's like, it's so depressed when I hear about senior living on any level and realize I'm so deep into that age group. Yeah, I mean, I I mean I I can relate 
Martha, because I'm like, oh, I think I can, my wife and I can probably move in up, up the street a little bit. Not that long. I don't have much to go. Um, I was at the airport in Miami and like it's a Sunday night in Miami. So like all these cruise ships are coming back. And so like all the restaurant, uh, the airport restaurants and the bars are just filled with people that just came back from a cruise. Um, and the cruising demographic is a little bit of an older one. But I, I met a couple that like I didn't think that they were that much older than me, but they have like grown grandkids. And I was like, oh, wait, huh? So I'm like, did I start that late? I'm not sure. So I didn't know. I was like, I was very confused. I'm like, I don't know what's going on with age anymore. <laughs> Stevie 76 says there should be a senior living 5K. Uh, is that a thing? I don't know. I was talking with, so I met all these different like journalists on this, uh, on this hookah trip. And, um, you know, they're talking about running in the armory. I'm like, oh, I never run in the armory. I think I was going to try and do the, like the, I think I was supposed to tr sign up for a track meet there at one point um, last winter, but I ended up not going. I can't remember what it was. And the other guy was like, was it the USATF Masters Indoor Championship? I'm like, that's right. That's what it was. And he's like, yeah, I signed up for that. I did it. It was super fun. It was great to run in the armory. The, the, uh, the track is super bouncy. It's a lot of fun. I was like, oh, man, I wish I had done that. He's like, have you ever done a master's event before? I'm like, oh, I have. I don't know if you guys knew this, but you're talking to the 2022 male 40 to 44 year old steeplechase third place champion. I know third place and champion are oxymoronic terms, but I don't know how else to say that I was the third place finisher for the nation in my age group. <laughs> and everyone laughed at me in a good way. So that was pretty funny. But I, I mean, I don't know. That'd be pretty cool. I mean, how, like, what do you think the age thing is for a senior lean 5K? I'm not that, I don't think I'm that far. I I'm, I'm smack dab in the middle of 40 to 44. Like, what is senior living 5K? I feel like that stuff's got to change. I also feel like they got to change the definition of masters too. I feel like 40s feels young for masters, but I don't know. But then here's the other thing. The USATF is like, I don't know why masters track and field isn't more popular. You could be a masters at like age 30 for track. And they're like, I don't know why we don't, we can't get people to come out. And then like the next day I'll see an Instagram reel of like USATF indoor championships. And they're showing the 80 to 85 group, which is super awesome. Don't get me wrong. But like, I feel like there needed to be like two tiers of masters. There should be like masters and like PhD. You know what I mean? Like that's another level. So I don't know. When I went to that masters meet, I was like the youngest person there. Other than some some people that came from like Atlanta Track Club that were like 35 years old and they were like they were doing blind baton passes for a four by four. And I was like, OK, guy, I'm going to get out of your guys way. <laughs> um, but like I was one of the younger guys and he was like, I don't know how we get more younger people in here. All our current competitors are dying. And I was like. He meant like they're getting old, not like they're dying, not at their events. I was like, well, I don't know. I'm not sure how to do that, but I'm here. So I had fun, but <laughs> I, do, I would like to do more senior events, I guess. Uh, Tiba says, hi, Kofuzi, trying to dial in my nutrition for the marathon, especially sodium. What's the recommended carbs and sodium per hour? I, I think it's going to depend on like how much um, you s sodium you sweat. I'm testing the Nix biosensor right now. It tells you kind of like how much you sweat on any given moment. Um, so that's maybe I'll test that again today. I did it once. Maybe I'll test it again today. So that way I don't have to run outside, but um, so I can change. But like um, I've kind of been going back and forth about it and kind of doing more of like I'm making sure I get a lot of sodium the week of the marathon. Uh, in addition to making sure I'm getting a lot of carbs as well to load up. And then like kind of just relying on the tiny amount of sodium that's in Martin gels and then also getting it from Gatorade on the course. And so like, that's kind of like what I've been doing. And if I'm taking like, you know, eight ounces of Gatorade an hour, that seems to be enough. I'm not sure exactly what that converts to, but if you're a heavy sweater, then you might need more than that. I used to do like uh, a Huma Chia every hour a Humachia plus and i think that had like 200 milligrams of salt in it or 150 something like that so um but i found that i don't 
actually need that much. I thought I did, but I, I didn't. So, uh. Ben Miller says, totally random. Does Max Cushion help with knee pain? Sometimes. So, like, if my knee ever, and I think it depends, I think the disclaimer on that is, I think it might also depend on the knee pain. So, I get runner's knee every once in a while, usually after a lot of high mileage weeks in a row. Um, and if that starts to kind of like start to resurface, the best shoe for me when that happens is Bondi, um, not necessarily Bondi X, but like the Bondi 9 or the Bondi 8 seems to be my like the one that agrees with it the most i think it's the rocker or whatever i'm not and then the the very stable platform the fresh foam more version four which i prefer as a max cushion shoe it's softer and springier doesn't feel as good doesn't feel bad but doesn't feel quite as helpful as the bondi does so i feel like for me a stable a more stable shoe helps when i have knee issues rather than a more cushioned shoe necessarily but if it were a very like if it were like a racing flat, that also probably wouldn't help either. All right. We got midlife runners with a PB alert. 123.58 for the Austin 3M half marathon. Awesome. Uh, yeah, there we go. That's the cowbell. So PR by six minutes and 32 seconds. Wow. Net downhill like the Jack and Jill of half marathons. 10 out of 10 would recommend. Wait. No one told me that the Austin half marathon was net downhill. I thought that that race was hilly. I talked to someone yesterday after the Miami marathon. This dude comes up to me and he's jacked. He's we ran with no shirt on. And he's like, um, he, he wants to get a photo. I'm like, yeah, awesome, dude. How'd you do out there today? He goes, oh, I just ran whatever. And I'm like, that's pretty fast, man. It's hot out here. He goes, well, I ran a PR last week in Austin or whatever. Was it last week? Yeah, it was last week, right? Yeah. He's like, I ran a PR in Austin. Um, and so today I was just out here for fun. I was like, oh man, that's impressive, dude. And I'm like, I'm looking at him like, okay, ran in Austin, super muscular dude running no shirt. And then I look at his hat. It's a bear, it's a bear performance nutrition. It's a BPN hat. So I'm like, okay, this all makes sense <laughs> now. But, uh, he, he had two impressive times in a row, but midlife runners, six minute, 32 second PR, 123.58. That's blazing fast too. I, I, my, my half marathon time is not fast. My PR, I think, is like a 126. I mean, not that that's not fast, but I think I have there's more meat on the bone there for me. I just never really like train for a half marathon. And I'm like, maybe this year I can do that, but I'm looking at my calendar and I'm, or I'm thinking about my calendar. I'm not looking at it, but I'm thinking about it. I'm like, I don't know. But I would love to get under like 120. Yeah, right? 123.58? That would be a per that would be great. I'd be really happy with that too that's amazing great job i'm jealous uh xavier wants to know is there any new hokushu update with the profi plus midsole um the mock is is the mock only going to get a mock x update this year that has profi tecton x is a is there going to be an, i think there's the tecton x2 is coming out that is profi isn't it or profi plus I don't think there's any more regular profile. It's all profile plus right at this point, isn't there? I don't, I don't know. I'm getting a little confused. I'm trying to think. Mm -hmm. Jason Doss says, hi, everyone. My pickleball flags <laughs> is that when I was a high school freshman, I was so dominant. My PE teacher pulled me out of my next class so I could play against his next hour students too. <laughs> That's awesome. That's so funny. I didn't pickleball was not a thing when I was in high school. I think I would have been good at that. I think I would have liked it. Um, and uh, another sport that my dad and I, I don't know if we're actually good or not, but we're very equally skilled and it's very fun to play against him is badminton. That's a fun one. I think badminton's under underrated, but I feel like pickleball take it, took it over. All right, let me scroll down and catch up to you guys. I'm really far behind. And then I got to get going today so I can fit that run in before I have to pick up the kids from the bus. Um, hmm. What else we got here? Alex Garcia says, Ultra Vanish Carbon or Hoka Rocket X2? That's a good combo. They're very different feeling, feet, feeling shoes because of the drop. 
I don't think I don't feel like the Vanish Carbon is a zero drop shoe. Although like they say like, well, it depends on where you measure it. Um, and like where you measure it is within world athletic standards and it's zero drop. But um it is a little bit denser of a foam. Interesting. I have to think about that one a little bit more. Because you get so much more room in the vanished carbon. And that's nice. I really like that about it. I don't know. I don't know. I have such a hard time with recency. Anything that I try more recently, I tend to like more. So I'm trying to like not get overexcited about it. But all right. Before I go, I want to tell you guys about a couple of things. Oh, wait. Maria Perales says, Austin has two races. The 3M half in January and the Austin Marathon half in February. The Austin Marathon half is definitely hilly. Okay, that's good to know. I gotta, I'll gotta. i have to remember, Maria. That's key. Because if I got there and I'd be like, somebody told me this was that downhill. That would have been really funny. Uh, maybe I'll find the 3M half in January. Maybe I'll do that one next January. I don't, I don't know, man. I like I love Miami. It was so much fun there. I was definitely overstimulated the entire time. I'm exhausted today, but like it's too hot. I I I'm I can't handle all that heat. So, so um, even in January, I was just like, it's a hot place. So so I don't know um, if I could ever go back to Miami. That's and it's not January. I feel like that'd be too hard. But like Austin in the winter, I think I I can handle that. That works for me. I think I could do that. Um. All right. Let me wrap up before let's let me wrap up with two other things since I got them here and so I don't forget. So we're talking about a lot of Hoka stuff. They also sent me this thing, which is the Hoka Transport. It's not a running shoe. It's a walking shoe. It's a commuter shoe. Um, hence it's called the Transport. Um, it's got like a, a very dense EVA midsole. Really nice insole in it though. I think this is like a recycled or like an eco vibram. Um outsole pattern um and uh comes with like the speed laces with a little bit of a lace loop and then uh, a nice kind of like bungee uh not bungee what is this called not power cord duracord i don't know what it's called but a little um heel pull tab on the back and then the material for the upper is cordura so it's a little bit more like durable of a material intended to take more of like a beading, I guess. And so I've traveled with this. It's a really good travel. Whoa. It's a really good travel shoe. Um, I didn't try running in it. It's a little bit heavy. I don't know that I'd want to run with it. It probably would. My guess is it feel a lot like the Kiwana. Um, but the tongue is a little bit on the puffy side, but that works for the kind of shoe that this is. The only thing I kind of wanted from it was a little bit of like just more like plushness on top of the toes ever since i i tried the asics tarther blast which was like the ff blast like casual shoe that had like a retro running shoe upper on it and it had padded toe box i'm like all casual shoes should have a padded toe box but it would make it hotter i was able to wear this with no socks and just kind of wear this around miami and that was a lot of fun and then for afterwards i mean you know, someone says, Luke Klein says it's grocery shopping and walking the dog. I'd say for people that like got to commute to work, you got to go from your car to the commuter train and then walk from the train station to your office, you know, that kind of thing. Or if you just want to have a, a shoe, especially in the wintertime in the Midwest, if you got to um, have a shoe to wear to get like to the gym, but you can't, you got to switch your shoes when you get to the gym because they don't want like snow all over the gym floor. Yeah, this is a good, I feel like this is a good one. I feel like this is going to be a lot of right about now time in the winter. Try that out. So that's kind of what I'm thinking. Um, and then the other one, they sent me, the, they gave me a pair of these Aura three slides. And like, they're not like super squishy soft, like an Ufos. They're not super squishy soft, like the um, Asics Breathe slide. Um, but they are comfy to, to wear underfoot. Um, I particularly enjoy like this part right here. It's extra squishy and just putting my heel in this little heel cup area just feels really, I feel like this is the softest part of the entire slide, just like this little pocket. And then the outsole just looks like an old Bondi. So it feels like they took like a Bondi and like slapped a slide top to it. And that's the best way I can describe these. They're pretty good. They're not the squishy. So if you want like a little bit firmer of a slide, this is going to work. I'm hoping that they're going to be like 
Tevas, Tevas, not Tevas. I say Tevas, but that's not how you say it. It's Tevas. Where like when you first get them, they're firm and then your feet make an imprint in it. So that's kind of what I'm hoping that it does. So we'll see. I'll, I'll let you know. <laughs> Calvin says the, the color though. Uh, yeah, I agree. It's weird. It's like puke green, I think. It's like it's like baby diarrhea color. I don't know. I yeah, it's weird. Hoka went Hoka's going wild with colors this year. Like this color for the Clifton, I'm not a huge fan of. This transport does come in a lot. Like this is the only colorway of the transport I don't love. The other ones are real. There's a gray one that's nice, uh, like a canvas colored one that's nice. Um, but like some of these colors from Hoka, like going wild. I don't know if it, it might be too wild for me. I'm not sure, but yeah, colors. Um, all right. Adam is here. He's tall, reminding us that a lot of actual running news happened and uh, we didn't get to any of it today. So maybe we'll get to that tomorrow. So um, that's going to be it for me today, guys. Uh, check out the Miami video. It was a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun making it. Spent a lot of time with Tommy Runs over the weekend. So that was really cool. And I really enjoyed Miami. Hope to go back again soon. Tomorrow there won't be a video, but we'll do that live stream. We'll talk about some racing, professional racing results. And uh, yeah, same time as today, 1 p.m. Central Time. Until I see you guys again, be safe out there, everybody. Thanks.